It's old news that Toyota isn't betting fully on electric cars. Instead, it believes that hybrids are the more efficient, better long-term solution. But there's more to the story than that. Today we're looking at Toyota's 1690 rule and how it drives Toyota EV strategy. We'll look at why Toyota's not rushing to sell you an EV and stick around to the end to see how Toyota's learning from and emulating Tesla. Don't you just love it when top secret corporate information gets leaked? I know I do. A while ago, Toyota issued a summary of its electric vehicle production and sales strategy to its dealerships. Sounds pretty standard and routine, except that, inside the summary, Toyota provided insider insight into its decision to focus more on hybrids rather than full battery electric vehicles. Needless to say, the internal document got leaked to the public over Twitter. Basically, Toyota is prioritizing hybrids over battery electrics because of three major barriers to EV adoption. The first barrier has to do with critical mineral supply. Get this, to support battery demand, we need over 300 new mines by 2035. The thing is, U.S. battery manufacturing capacity is taking off right now. But Toyota doesn't believe the supply for raw mineral will be able to keep up. If Toyota's prediction proves true, this means two things, shortages and higher costs. If materials costs increase, that means higher manufacturing costs. And Toyota's not the only car manufacturer to recognize this. In fact, this is the very reason why some car makers are for the first time in history starting to partner and invest in mining sectors as a strategy to secure their own mineral supplies. This is one of the reasons why Toyota believes the same rare and limited materials can be better used to make more hybrids at affordable prices as opposed to battery electric cars. Of course, the Inflation Reduction Act changes things. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, a pretty substantial chunk of EVs and PHEVs that used to qualify for a tax credit don't qualify anymore. That's why dealers and car makers have been reporting a lot lower interest in these specific vehicles. Think cars like the Hyundai Ioniq 5. When it first launched, it initially qualified for the $7,500 credit, but not anymore. And consumers now see the Ioniq as offering less value than before. But then look at the other side. Consumer interest in standard hybrids like the all-new Prius is high, and it's continuing to grow. Same with the Sienna Hybrid minivan. Some consumers are willing to wait 9 to even 12 months for it. Quick side note though, this doesn't mean that Toyota has closed its doors to EVs completely. Think vehicles like the BZ4X, which is a full battery electric crossover, and the RAV4 Prime, which is a plug-in hybrid. The second barrier to EV adoption, according to Toyota, is the charging infrastructure. Public charges have already started to gain a reputation for being unreliable. Picture this. You're on a family road trip. The kids are screaming in the back. You have to pull over to charge your EV. And the kids ask, are we there yet? But now you make the unfortunate mistake of pulling up to a slow or worse a broken EV charger. Probably not the road trip you want to be on. But that's not even the whole problem. Right now, there is no standardization in charging infrastructure here in the States. Ultimately, this means limited access to the public and reduced charging speeds too. Critics state that public charging still has a long way to go and it's far from reliable. Others say that public charging is by far the least satisfying aspect of owning an EV. According to one report, almost 21% of EV drivers who relied on public charging stations either experienced charging failures or equipment malfunctions that left them stuck and unable to charge their vehicles. Now you can see why range anxiety has some basis. To be fair, there was some small improvement from the quarter before, but it's still 14.5% worse than data gathered two years ago. By the way, when I say equipment malfunctions, I'm not just talking about slow charging. When you pull up to a public charging station, it's not uncommon to see broken screens, plugs, or cables, either due to vandalism, theft, or other causes. And then there's also the matter of trying to pay to charge, but then facing issues with the payment system or network connection failures. And if that's not not bad enough, each and every newcomer to the public charging system will at some point face some of these issues, and maybe even accidentally cause some of these issues themselves, which only perpetuates the problem. With EVs taking off already, it's a matter of time. We can only hope that the public charging infrastructure will improve, but to be realistic, it will require time. In Toyota's eyes, why wait for the infrastructure to iron itself out? Why not just take the hybrid route now? That's the more pragmatic route, and I can see the logic behind that. 
The third major barrier to EV adoption is EV affordability. Let's scratch the cost of installing a home charger. Even then, you're looking at EV prices that are generally more expensive than gas-powered vehicles. Now, with the Inflation Reduction Act and the EV tax credit, that helps alleviate some of this. Nevertheless, keep in mind that not all EVs qualify. Toyota isn't sitting by idle. It's created its own solution. Toyota calls it the 1690 rule. In light of the critical mineral supply shortage and all these other challenges, the answer to the problem isn't to create more EVs. It's rather to create more hybrids. Toyota crunched a lot of numbers. It found out that the same amount of critical minerals that's needed to make one battery electric vehicle can otherwise be used to make six plug-in hybrids or 90 standard hybrids, hence the ratio of 1 to 6 to 90. Now you see why Toyota's prioritizing hybrids. But that's not even the craziest part. On top of that, Toyota found out that the overall carbon reduction of 90 hybrids over their lifetime is 37 times that of a single battery electric car. Now, Toyota's hybrid models have been successful so far. And once you take a look at that data that Toyota's gathered, you can see why leadership at Toyota are focusing on standard hybrids. But of course, there's always the naysayers. One critic remarked that some of the statements that came from Toyota when Akio Toyota was CEO give the impression that Toyota intends for hybrids to stay around forever. Yet the critic believes that hybrids should only be a temporary stopgap solution until EVs are able to take over. Other critics say that if Toyota doesn't start focusing more on EVs with Toyota his new president, Koji Sato, at the helm, then Toyota will risk leaving money on the table as EVs become more prominent. If you were to loud thump earlier this year, that may have been the sound of Toyota's jaws dropping. The reason is, the electric revolution is moving full steam ahead, and it looks like Toyota's being left behind. Toyota's solution is to adapt. Toyota knows that big names like Tesla are at the top of the electric vehicle chain. And so, for Toyota to compete against Tesla and other EV makers, Toyota needs to start out putting more cars that no other car makers are offering. Now, most of you know how I feel about Tesla and its poor build quality, but you do have to give them credit for mastering the formula to pump out EVs efficiently and profitably. Tesla's all about out-of-the-box and unorthodox designs when it comes to its vehicles and its factories. Because of this, some analysts say that Tesla has effectively beaten Toyota at its own game. But not everyone agrees. Toyota's deputy chief of global production, Yoshio Nakamura, says this will soon change. In a recent interview, he acknowledged that Tesla's technology was admirable. Actually, he called it wonderful. But then he turned it around saying that it's precisely that wonderful technology that drives Toyota to work even harder. He also added that if Toyota is to learn from Tesla one day, that the innovations with Toyota may or may not adopt wouldn't be a complete copy. Instead, Toyota would emulate it and make it even better. And here's where Toyota's gaping jaw drop comes in. For years, the Toyota Corolla was the world's best-selling cars. But in the first quarter of this year, 2023, Tesla snuck up behind Toyota and snatched that title away. That's right. The Tesla Model Y outbeat Toyota Corolla as the best-selling car earlier this year. This was a big blow to Toyota and a tipping point. Add that to the fact that Toyota's U.S. sales fell by nearly 9% the same quarter, and you can see why Toyota is really concerned now. This begs the question, what's Toyota to do now? Well, here's how Toyota is tackling the Tesla trauma. According to some reports, Toyota conducted a teardown of the Tesla Model Y to figure out what exactly makes it so successful, a reverse engineering of sorts. Toyota learned that, to beat Tesla, it must at minimum match Tesla's design and manufacturing innovation, and eventually offer more than that. You can see Toyota's new line of thinking when you consider its production ideas. A lot of it mirrors Tesla's production ideas. I'm talking more things like robots, extra investments, new software to reduce manufacturing lead time, new production processes, basic Basically, a complete overhaul of Toyota as we know it. To do this, Toyota plans on investing a whopping $17 billion in EVs by 2030. By then, the company also hopes to be selling 3.5 million EVs per year. But that's not all that Toyota is doing to tackle the problem. This is where gigacasting comes in. Now I know what you're thinking, Scotty, what in the world is gigacasting? Well, let me break it down for you. The first part of the word giga is in the name Tesla because it really seems to like that word. Think of Tesla gigafactories, for example. Now, the other car makers refer to gigacasting as mega presses. These are usually smaller, but nevertheless, still a huge machine. These machines can take a 176-pound shot of molten aluminum, or more, into a mold. It's then formed into a part, released, and then quickly cooled. In other words, the machine uses just one mold to cast multiple parts of a vehicle's body. In addition to this process, Tesla has also developed an aluminum alloy that allows it to skip the heat treating that's normally used by other automakers to increase the strength 
of the cast part. With Tesla's Giga Casting, fewer parts are needed, costs are lowered, waste is reduced, and production is simplified down the line. According to Elon Musk, just by using a single piece from the front and rear of its Model 3, Tesla 3 was able to remove 600 robots from the vehicle assembly line. Toyota's emulating this. It expects that using aluminum die casting will eliminate dozens of sheet metal parts from the assembly and reduce waste. Toyota has already started using an imitation of this technology in its Mirai fuel cell sedan. But it's not just Toyota that's chasing learning from Tesla. So is GM, Hyundai, Volvo, Polestar, and others. Volvo said it will invest more than $900 million to upgrade its plant near Gothenburg, Sweden, and incorporate mega press technology. But here's the problem. Gigacasting mega presses, or whatever you call it, is rather expensive. Tesla has the luxury of not being too worried about sky-high costs because its Model 3 and Model Y EVs have high sales volumes to make up for it. On the other hand, car makers who have only recently entered the EV game don't have that same advantage or that kind of money. But now you tell me, what do you think of Toyota's 1690 rule? And do you think Toyota will win the EV race with its hybrid strategy? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.